Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief keeps you informed about what's happening in Annapolis, Anne Arundel County, and Maryland. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and, of course, local weather. Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Thursday, November 10th, 2022. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Feels like old man winter is starting to knock on our door a little bit. Might need to start thinking about wearing some long pants again. Well, I guess George will set us straight a little bit later. And I want to do apologize for yesterday. My apologies for putting in the wrong forecast. I grabbed Tuesday's forecast by mistake. It happens. Sorry. All right. We have a little bit of news to get to. So let's get into it, shall we? Here's one for the what are the chances file. On Tuesday, an Anne Arundel County police officer witnessed a crash right near the courthouse in Glen Burnie. A white Kia struck a gray Hyundai, and after the Kia came to arrest, the occupants bailed. After a brief foot chase, one of them was caught. He was a 15-year-old boy from Pasadena. As they were figuring it all out, they determined that the Kia was stolen. Oddly, the Hyundai that was hit didn't remain at the scene either and was later found on Post 40 Road. And at that time, they learned that the Hyundai was also reported stolen. So what are the chances of two stolen vehicles colliding in front of a courthouse witnessed by a police officer? If you know those odds, play the Powerball. Tevi News. This is the spy couple that lived in Hillsmere here in Annapolis. The man, Jonathan, was a Navy engineer working on nuclear subs, and his wife, Diana, was a teacher at the Key School. Well, they were sentenced yesterday, and the U.S. District Judge in West Virginia gave Diana 21 years in federal prison and Jonathan 19 years. Both of those sentences are over the minimum guidelines. The judge said at the cumulative impacts of the crime still remain to be seen. Jonathan tried to sell the secrets to undercover agents posing as foreign nation. He'd leave the SD cards in sandwiches and candy wrappers at predetermined locations while his wife served as the lookout. All right, election news. Dan Cox conceded. Julie Hummer declared victory. Beyond that, we don't know too much. We hope to have some more results today as the Board of Elections begins to count the mail-in and drop-off ballots. Now, they have said that they will count 15,000 per day, and we've got about 46,000 or so to count, which means that we're going to go into next week before we really have any kind of a definitive answer as to who won most of these races. Friday is a holiday. Currently, Jessica Hare leads County Executive Pittman by eight points and a little more than 10,000 votes. And yesterday morning, I spoke with Dr. Dan Natap from Anne Arundel Community College, and he was rerunning the numbers and feels that Pittman will need to get 63% or more of all of the outstanding ballots in order to win. If he gets 60%, he loses by 2,000 votes. If he gets 63%, he wins by 57 votes. Remember, every vote counts. Nataf also noted that the depressed voting numbers for the county executive race sort of are concerning. Actual votes plus the projected mail-in ballots total 192,451. Yet in 2018, the number that voted for county executive was 226,477. And back in 2014, that number was 176,331. It should be noted the county executive Pittman went from there is no possible path for my opponent to win last night at his rally to the math suggests that I will be reelected to a second term earlier today. And with the other races, many are in the same position with precarious leads or lags, and the mail-in ballots will definitely change the current tallies. With all that said, we wait. Hey, can you ring a bell? The Salvation Army needs you. If you can spare a shift or two this season, you can sign up at, appropriately enough, registertoring.com. You can do it solo. You can do it with a partner or a friend, a neighborhood, church group, whatever. Personally, I know that former alderman Fred Payone, Nancy Almgren, also known as Mrs. Claus, and alderwoman Ellie Tierney all ring and love it. If you can lend a hand, they would love to have you help in this great initiative. Again, register to ring.com. And that's all I've got news wise. Podcast stuff up this weekend on the local business spotlight. We'll hear from Unity Bands. Next weekend, it's going to be Lifetime. 
And if you missed the bonus pod with Joan Osborne, give that a listen. She is in town tonight, and I just peeked in. There are about a dozen tickets left, and that's going to be an awesome show. You can get them at rampsetonstage.com. And that is a wrap. As always, thank you for being you, and thank you to the sponsors for the Daily News Brief. Solar Energy Services, the Christy Neidhart team of Northrop Realty, a long-end foster company, and Scout and Molly's. Now you just need to hang tight because we have George from DC MDVA Weather here with your locally forecast weather. And I did double check. It is the correct forecast. And Trevor is here again with Annapolis Makerspace and your Maker Minutes. All that coming up in just a bit. Ready for a new look for those end of summer parties? Come see us at Scout and Molly's. I'm Betsy Abraham. My mom and I own and operate this great little boutique at the Annapolis Town Center. After spending the last two years shopping online, Come enjoy a fun, in-person shopping experience with a bonus, real customer service. We'd love to help you pick out the perfect outfit for back-to-school Annapolis boat shows and nights out with your friends. Scout and Molly's, Annapolis Town Center. Thanks for shopping local. When you live near Annapolis, you know how fickle the weather can be. So you need a truly local forecast that's accurate and reliable. Forecast right here in Annapolis. DC MDVA weather is not just for today, but for the rest of the week and the weekend too. Now here's George Young of DC MDVA weather with the weather outlook for today and beyond. Hey everyone, this is George with DC MDVA weather, and this is your eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, November 10th. A very nice weather day is on tap for the Annapolis region today ahead of a rainy day tomorrow with some potential for severe weather in the PM hours. And then it's cold air moving into the region by Sunday. Look for sunshine, light winds, and high temps in the 64 to 71 degree range today to be followed by rain throughout much of the day Friday as the remnants of Hurricane Nicole moves by just to the west of D.C. and Baltimore, which will likely bring widespread one to two inches of rain to the region. And it could deliver some thunderstorms as well with a very small but a valid chance of a few tornadoes in the mid to late p.m. hours Friday. So stay tuned for updates throughout the day tomorrow as the weather situation begins to unfold. From there, sun will return Saturday with highs in the low to mid 60s, but cold air will move into the region from that point forward with highs in the upper 40s to maybe lower 50s each day Sunday through Wednesday with AM lows in the upper 20s to lower or mid 30s Monday through Wednesday mornings as we enter an extended period of below average temps after a very above average first 11 days of November. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DC MDVA Weather. Make it a great day out there today. Stay healthy and be safe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for regular updates each day, along with our website at dcmdvaweather.info. And definitely be sure to download our DC MDVA Weather app on all of your devices from either the Apple or Google App Stores so you can always stay weather informed. Hello, energy consumers. This is Rick Peters, president of Solar Energy Services. Have you been looking for ways to save money recently? Maybe you should consider solar energy for your home. Or are you waiting for the technology to get cheaper? If so, how long are you going to wait? Today's solar costs less than 20% of what it cost 10 years ago. But while solar prices have declined every year, so have the financial incentives. Bottom line, if you wait for cheaper solar, you're also waiting for lower incentives. Take my home, for example. My solar system was installed in 2010 and it's been paid off for almost five years and i no longer have to buy any electricity for another 15 to 20 years if i waited for cheaper solar i'd still be paying an electric bill at solar energy services we have thousands of satisfied customers who are sure glad they didn't wait so what are you waiting for sunshine's a wasted call us today for a free solar design at 410-923-6090 or on the web at solarsaves.net sunshine sunshine Nothing else can make me feel so fine. Every week, makers, crafters, and educators hold events all over the area. Highlighting some of those, here's our Maker Minutes, brought to you by Annapolis Makerspace. Hey, this is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. The Maryland STEM Festival still has a few events coming up all over Maryland, celebrating STEM and STEAM topics for both kids and adults through the end of November. Check out their calendar for events happening near you at MarylandSTEMFestival.org. And it's in pieces off of Bestgate Road. Saturday, they have a repeat of their title Pools Cal Crochet Class. Sunday, their Christmas Socks Class starts, the first of three sessions. On Monday, their Learn to Knit a Gibbs Sweater continues. And on Tuesday, their Mosaic Knitting 101 continues at Art Farm in Annapolis. Tonight, they have another sketch night, not a drawing class, 
Just a fun social sketch night with a live model. Saturday, they have first exposure photography in the morning, and then a pattern tote bag workshop for adults and teens at noon. And on Sunday, check out Vibe Flow and Chill Yoga in the morning, a henna workshop for teens and adults in the late morning, and the return of their encaustic experimentation class for teens and adults from noon to early afternoon, a process-based workshop exploring alternative art techniques based around wax, and the kids' fall semester continues. Today, there's exploring process and pattern for ages 10 through 15. Saturday, there's experimenting with layered painting for ages 9 through 12. Monday, there's both the kids' art school for ages 6 through 8, as well as embroidery for ages 10 through 14. And then on Wednesday, there's both the fundamentals of drawing for ages 8 through 11, as well as artists wanted intro to graphic design for ages 12 through 16. At the Anne Arundel County Public Library system this week, today in Odenton, there's Catapult Design Challenge for homeschoolers ages 6 through 10. Tomorrow, Edgewater has a crafting materials exchange. Saturday, Deal has gardening and SoCo, Word of Earth, learn about medicinal plants used by indigenous Americans, and Maryland City has make your own foosball game. Then on Monday, Deal has their Nature Explorers Club. Crofton has a breaker space, taking apart computers, toys, radios, and other items to see what's inside. Bush Annapolis has fall into crafting, and Odenton has their monthly mixed media, art inspired by music, and at unallocated space in Severn. Tonight, they have their virtual happy hour. Tomorrow, there's a DEFCON 443 cybersecurity meetup with topics such as InfoSec, SDR, Capture the Flag, Ham Radio, Lockpicking, and a little bit of everything involving security, cyber or otherwise. Saturday, they're celebrating their 12th anniversary with a party and potluck. Monday is their project night. Tuesday, their electronics fundamentals class continues. And then on Wednesday is their open house. If you have any questions about the Annapolis Makerspace, the Maker Minutes, or any of these events, feel free to contact me at trevor at makeannapolis.org. And you can find links to all of these events at the Annapolis Makerspace website, also at makeannapolis.org. And whether you're making art, software, sawdust, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Another moving moment from Christy Neidhart of the Christy Neidhart team from Northrop Realty, a long and foster company. Hi, I'm Christy Neidhart. Gearing up for the Bay Bridge Run Walk, I figured if I was going to walk, then why not do it for a cause? And why not bring along some friends, too? I reached out to Stacy Nicholson of CNR Insurance and Dale Watson of Alpha Engineering. And they said yes, but why stop there? So we're putting out an official challenge to join forces with us. So we'll walk for a cause Sunday, November 13th. All funds raised will support backpacks for kids, Christmas for children, and diapers for babies. These programs make a difference in the lives of people throughout our community. We invite you to walk with us. Join Team Walk the Walk Foundation, and registration is free. Visit WTWF.org to register and learn more. Already registered? No problem. You can still join our Walk the Walk fundraising team. What's that website again? WTWF.org. Together, we can rock this walk. Who's in? You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues, this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis and Anne Arundel County. And don't forget about our website, IamAnnapolis.net, where you can find even more information. And make sure you follow us on Facebook at All Annapolis and on Twitter at IamAnnapolis. This Daily News Brief podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m.